So we're looking at page 78, alternating series. Uh, alternating series involve uh, transitions from negative to positive terms. So I highlighted the values or the components that lead to the, those transitions. So we have negative one raised to the n plus one versus negative one raised to the nth. Right? So what'll happen is when I plug in a one in each case, I'll get a different value, but I think that's hopefully obvious. But in the case of the first series, negative one would be raised to the second power. If you raise a negative to an even power, you get a positive result, All right? So that gives us a sense, hopefully, of why this one here is a positive one, to get started anyway. When I plug in a two, that negative one is raised to the third power, giving us a negative, because a negative raised to an odd power gives you a negative result, all right? So that leads us to the second series, negative one raised to the nth. If I plug in a one, I get an odd power, negative one, to the first is negative one. If I plug in a two, negative one to the second, even power negative one to the second would be a positive one, giving us a positive, and then it would alternate back and forth that way, all right? So the blurb here is very important. It says, in general, just knowing that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals zero, all right? So if you're thinking back to the nth term test, uh, if it's equal to zero, it tells us very little about the convergence of the series, all right? If it was not equal to zero, then, then we would know a little bit more in, in terms of uh, divergence and such. But if it's equal to zero, that's where it was inconclusive, all right? But what happens is, and it's really a nice kind of outcome, if it's alternating, if it's an alternating series, it must converge if the terms have a limit of zero and also the terms decrease in magnitude, key term there, or key word, magnitude. All right, so regardless of the sign, if the absolute value of each term, each consecutive term is smaller than the one that preceded it, then you're showing a decreasing relationship. So if you have an alternating series that has that decreasing relationship, then it will converge if the limit of the a sub n, so the part of the argument contained within the summation, if that limit approaches zero, or well, the limit, I guess, by definition would have to approach zero, but um, if the limit is zero, then you can say that the alternating series converges by the alternating series test, or the series converges by the alternating series test. All right, so I'll walk you through an example or two on that one. All right, now there is the notation about why the, uh, you wouldn't say it diverges on, based off the alternating series test if the, uh, the limit is not equal to zero, but we'll get to that, we'll cross that bridge in a minute. All right, we'll cross, to, we'll cross it when we get to it anyway. All right, so first we need to verify that a sub n, which is n over 2n minus 1, is going to be decreasing. All right, so there's two ways to do this. One way would be to list out, you know, in an expanded form. So plugging in a 1. So 1 over 2 minus 1 is 1, comma, 1 over, if I plug in a 2, I get 4 minus 1 is 3. Uh, I'm sorry, that should have been a 2 on top. Uh, 3 over 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So 2 thirds, about 0 0.67, 0 0.6 repeated, 0 0.6, well, 1 is 1. Just check one more, 4 over 7, maybe you go to a calculator on that one. 
just to verify that that's going to be something less than 0.6 and it is so you're good to go there the other way to do it would be to assume that a sub n is a sequence of points that fall on the function f of x equals x over 2x minus 1. All right. So we're not saying that a, and this goes back a long ways to stuff that we've been talking about, you know, right in the beginning of the unit. We're not saying that f of x and a, a sub n are the same thing. We're saying that the continuous function f of x contains points that follow the sequence of a sub n equals n or uh, 2n minus 1. All right, very subtle difference to the point where people are like, well, that sounds like exactly the same thing. But the bottom line is it's, it's really not. And if you can kind of come to terms with that, it'll lead you to a, a fairly solid understanding of the concept. All right, so zoom 6. All right, it does look to be decreasing for the relevant values of n, so we're in good shape there. All right, so we have check. It is decreasing. All right, it, you know, it says that is a sub n plus 1 is less than a sub n for all, all n. That's the definition of decreasing, so we're not worried about that. All right, so this piece here tells us that we're dealing with an alternating series. So now I'm going to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is the limit as n approaches infinity of n over 2n plus uh, 2n minus 1, apologies, which is going to be based off of knowledge of horizontal asymptotes and things of that nature, uh, or n behavior models, 1 half. All right. So here we're saying... that it's, it's not necessarily going to converge, all right? So we'll, we'll tackle that meaning in a second. But we did not get a verification of the two conditions that we needed to. We got this one accounted for, but we did not verify this one, all right? So now we got to look at the notation. This does not say that if a sub n, the limit as a sub n of a sub n as n approaches infinity is not equal to zero series diverges from by the alternating series test. The alternating series test can only be used to prove convergence. All right. So if it does not satisfy the conditions for the alternating series test, then what we do is we revert back to the nth term test. All right, so you got to ask, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, let's kind of take a step back here. The nth term test, if you remember, is the limit as n approaches infinity. So let's go nth term. The limit as n approaches infinity of the entire argument contained within the summation, all right? So that would be including the alternating part. Okay, so one of the properties of limits allows us to split a limit up based off of products, quotients, sums, difference, whatever you can, essentially whatever, I don't want to overgeneralize, but it all often feels like whatever you can think of, right? So I'm going to say the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times the limit as n approaches infinity of n over 2n minus 1. All right. Now, negative 1 to the n plus 1 will either be negative 1 or positive 1. It will never be anything else. It's got to be one of those two things. 
We just don't know which one it's going to be. So what we'll do is we'll write this as plus or minus 1. This other piece here, we know to be 1 half. All right. So we know as a result that this is not going to be equal to 0. And by the nth term test, all right, so we'll call this, you can call it whatever you want for the sake of not having to write it again. If you want to call this b sub n, you can. All right. Or you could just write it, write the whole thing out. It really doesn't make a difference. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll call it b sub n here. Because we've already used a sub n. All right. So what we would say is the sum as n equals 1 to infinity of b sub n diverges or does not converge by the nth term test. All right, and that's because if you think back to the nth term test, what did you do? You test for divergence by finding the limit of the argument of the summation as n approaches infinity. If it did not equal zero, then you knew that you were dealing with something that diverged. It was the case where it equaled zero that you'd have a problem. And you'd have to move on to something else. All right, that's why we do things like the p-series test. If you apply the nth term test to a p-series, you're going to get zero. It doesn't mean it converges because, you know, 1 over n doesn't converge, but 1 over n to the fifth power does converge. All right, so just because the nth term test gives you a zero doesn't mean you're, you're dealing with convergence. There's more to it than that. But if, it, if the nth term test gives you something other than zero, then you know that you're dealing with divergence, right? And that should be your first step along the journey. It's just it hadn't come up in recent um, series because th they were particular cases that we knew would not uh, follow the nth term test, all right? So we test based off of our knowledge of alternating series to see if, there, if it will converge. And if it doesn't, we can just actually jump from here to here by saying that it diverges by the nth term test. Because if you really think about it, the only difference between running the nth term test on the a sub n and what I'm calling the b sub n is that plus or minus. And that plus or minus doesn't have an impact on anything because unless this is a zero, this is always going to be something other than zero. All right. So let's take a look at part B or question B. All right. So we know that it's alternating series. All right. So I'm going to pull an a sub n out. We can model it with an f of x. We can test that in our calculators. Now, I can tell you that it's going to look very much like what you see on the screen here. But I'll put it in anyway. If you know your functions, then this becomes a lot easier. All right, so this is decreasing. for all relevant values, you know, I mean, that's something that I'm going to accept without, you know, people elaborating. I don't need you to write decreasing for all relevant values of n or relevant values of x if you're using x to model the n. Uh, but that that's what decreasing means, all right? Because yeah, yeah, there's no guarantee the function will always be decreasing, all right? So what we're going to do now is find the limit. as n approaches infinity of 1 over n. All right. So now that limit is going to be equal to 0. Now just be careful about stuff like this because you see the 1 over n. And I just got through talking about p-series. So you might think, oh, 1 over n. Well, it's 1 over n to the 1. That, 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 that diverges. You know, it's, it's, just be careful. I'm asking for the limit 
as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, not the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. All right? So it's two separate things. All right? So we look back at our test here, and we see that we meet both of our conditions. And so therefore, I never defined this as anything other than what it was, so I'm going to rewrite converges by the alternating series test. All right. So just thinking back to when we first got, you know, started going down this road, uh, trying to verify convergence and divergence, I said, all right, we got the arithmetic series and we got, and later on we'll learn about alternating series. Here we are learning about alternating series. You can abbreviate alternating series with AST. That's the only thing you can abbreviate with AST, right? So don't go abbreviating arithmetic series with AST. And besides, how many times has uh, arithmetic series come up since we talked about it that one time, right? Not very frequently. Alternating series is going to come up very, very frequently.